So, ah, Shakespeare, eh? Shakespeare, the question is, why should we and how shall we study him? And what will we read in this class, in my class particularly? So that is the question, those are the questions I answered. So the first question is why, okay? Why do we study Shakespeare? And it's actually very easy to answer it in Canada, in Vancouver, in BC. Uh, it is easy to answer because you just have to. And if you are, you are studying at uh, colleges, at I mean, at secondary schools here, you just have to learn Shakespeare. It is a part of the curriculum. And um, you usually have to learn one or two play, right? Um, to get good marks, to graduate from high school with flying marks and uh, to get to your dream university, you'd better know him and you'd better know how to read his plays. Okay, how to, how to get good marks out of his play. So that is a simple answer. And of course, if you insist on why, why is he important? Why is he such a big deal? And he is, he is a very important person very big deal, very big deal in, according to many different people, all right, for many different reasons, okay? Uh, first reason is he is accredited with the invention of many English words. In fact, an old version of the Oxford English Dictionary said that he invented 33,000 words English. But that was an old version, okay? That is the version that published between 1884 and 1928. Um, I give you the link. So this is where I, I find this information. Um, in fact, if you just ask the question, say how many words um, did Shakespeare invent? Then you will have different answers from the internet. So um, the this is the, this is the, the, the biggest number that I found. And then some say he invented 1,700 words. That's a lot of words too, right? But then there, there are people say, no, not so many. I don't think so. And then finally, the lowest number is 422. Nonetheless, all right? So um, even if he has invented 422 words, then he is... He is a creator of that language to a certain extent, right? That is not the point. So the point is he is able to use the simplest words to say what is on the tip of your tongue or my tongue, right? But you and I just cannot utter it regardless if it's a thought, a murmur of love or an utterance of outrage. We speak English, we speak the language, but when it comes to time to express it so well, he does it the best, okay? And he does it not only very eloquently, but very succinctly and simply. Let's take to be or not to be for an example, right? Say everybody, whenever you say Shakespeare, and then they'll say to be or not to be, okay? So why is this line such a big deal? If we study it carefully, we will find it is a big deal. First of all, to be or not to be is talking about a subject that is very important, right? It is talking about whether I should live or I should die. It's talking about life and death matters a very important, huge theme in human life and in human literature. And according to Kurt Vonnegut, a favorite writer of mine, all right, he is, he's written a book uh, about English style and it is the most famous book about English style, about how to write all right, in English. So, um, this sentence is succinct. According to, according to Kurt Vonnegut, he said, William Shakespeare and James Joyce wrote sentences which were almost childlike. 
when their subjects were most profound. I told you their subject, the subject is about life and death. But he's talking in such simple sentences, to be or not to be, right? To be or not to be asks Shakespeare's Hamlet. The longest word in this line is three letters long. That's how cool he is, right? And that three, three letter long, long word is not, of course. And if you are interested in learning all that, uh, this is a link that I posting here. And the, my opinion of the sentence, now that I'm a grammar teacher, I discovered that he uses the verb be, normally a mere aux, auxiliary or link verb. And he uses it as an action verb so that it names the state usually ignored by the English way of thinking. The English way of thinking puts a lot of emphasis on action, all right? It does not pay attention to verb be. In fact, in a lot of writing suggestions, they want you to change your be verb into other verbs, more active verbs. But here, to be or not to be, to be becomes to live, to exist, and no action, but just to be, all right? To be there, right? So it's uh, very nice. Um, so these are examples of how powerful and how skillful his usage of English words are. The second reason is his quotes are ubiquitous, meaning you can find things that he said everywhere, everywhere around you, all right? For example, that the one that we just quoted, or you can say also, um, you hear people say this all the time, he, in uh, As You Like It, Act 2, Scene 7, okay, we find Shakespeare saying, all the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits, exits and their entrances. And one man in his time plays many parts. So when I was learning this as a student, okay, I find it very cute. I find it very cool. I find it very Shakespeare. But now that I am over 50, when I look at it again, I find it very cool. I find it very Shakespeare, okay? But it is a different understanding. It's not just a metaphor anymore. It is truth and it means so many things. All the other, all the detail of the drama, I put it in for myself, okay? So that is how Shakespeare is working. He grows with you. So that's why we should start learning it earlier. All right, so next one, the quotes again. I'm saying that the quotes are everywhere. Some bequeath wisdom. So for example, he, he says, what's in a name? A rose by any other name would smell less sweet, right? And then he says, to thine own self be true. Isn't that a powerful advice to anybody, right? To thine own self be true. All that glit glitter glisters is not gold, all right? So very smart talks. And then sometimes he also talks about friendship, love, and literary style too. For example, he says, friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your years. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. So this is Julius Caesar. And this is the beginning of a speech and very nice. And we, today, we always hear people say, lend me your years before the start of a speech. And that comes from here. And then another point on love, love looks not with the eyes, but with the mind. And therefore, 
is a winged Cupid's painted blind. So the first part is already very powerful, right? Number nine about style, and he is very good at what he teaches other people to do. He says brevity is the soul of wit, and he is able to write very brief, very succinct sentences to say so much more. And others deal with characters and success. For example, he say some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. All right, and he says. Cowards die many times before their death. The villain, the valiant, never taste of death, but once. Okay, so all these quotes from this website, I should point it out. Okay, so and you can, if you want to read more quotes by Shakespeare, you can go there. Very, very good stuff. So that's why we. Admire him. He has basically said all the smart things that people can say, and we understand this this type of people, don't we? Okay. So it is safe to say that he represents the English language and the culture, or he is partially the English language and culture itself. So that's how important he is, and that's why we should learn about him. And there are many other reasons, like I already told you, right? Many other reasons why he is important. And in our culture, in the Chinese culture, we know somebody else. We know a person who is comparable to him. All right. We know why we study the person who said all of these things, all these smart, smart things. Right, 不义而富且贵，优而如浮云。Right, all these things are said by Confucius, and Shakespeare is to English is not any different from Confucius is to Chinese, and Shakespeare is one and the only. Whereas in in ancient China, there are a lot of a lot of smart people like Confucius. So we understand why he is important. Now we ask the next question: How shall we study Shakespeare, especially at Ron Learnings? Okay, we study him,、um, and if you want to study Shakespeare here, you have to work hard. So we are going to learn. We are going to study Shakespeare by working very hard. And to study him, that I plan to do first is. We are going to every time we study a play. We are going to treat each play as a real life situation. Okay, we read the situation. For example, if we are reading Hamlet, we are going to ask, "What is his problem?" Right? If I am faced with the same problem, how would I solve it? So you all, so that's the identification part. You identify with the character. You bring yourself into the situation, and you ask yourself, "Would I kill my friend, okay, like Macbeth did, just because the witches told me that his children and the children of his children are going to be the king? Would I kill my best friend just because of a fortune teller told me something?" You ask yourself these questions, and then you can understand the the play way much better. And then, of course, you can compare yourself to Hamlet. You say, "Would I make decisions better, make decisions faster than Hamlet? Why is it so hard for him to make up his mind?" All right. And we are going to write. We write our own plays dealing with the similar situation, and that is the time when you can compare, and you can you can see. You can tell, all right. Let's try our hands, all right. Just to embarrass ourselves, not really. Just to know, like, what kind of considerations. If we are, you are faced with the same task, all right. We are writing a play, just like Shakespeare is writing a play. But if we are faced with the same situation, and then 
see how Shakespeare deals with it amazingly, way better, right? And then we're going to read it out loud. And Shakespeare is very funny. Shakespeare, um, if you are reading it like it's a book, then you miss the whole point of it. And uh, the first time I, I saw a performance of Shakespeare's, Shakespeare's play is here in Vancouver uh, uh, at Bard on the Beach. Every summer, um, there's one event called Bard on the Beach. So uh, Shakespearean companies will come and put, put, uh, put up uh, performances, all right? And then uh, I, watched, uh, I watched Hamlet and I watched uh, uh, Tempest, which I loved the most, and then um, and the other plays. So um, when I watched The Tempest and I suddenly understand, wow, this guy is really good. It is, it is from then I started to, to allow myself to read a lot more about him. And in the old days, I'm not interested in, in Shakespeare. Okay? I find it very old, very boring, but that's my own miss, right? I missed it. Um, now, um, and when I, when I watched uh, the, the play, The Tempest, I realized that this guy is not really all English. This guy is probably Chinese. Let me explain that later. So I, and from then on, I find that he is different. He is so different that he really, and I like to say this a lot. I say, so look at him. He, he said many bad things about women and he's too popular, all right? He's, he's anti-Semitic, anti all right? He said bad things about Jews. He's too popular. So he is beyond reproach, right? And then you find out you want, you want why. And then you discovered that, that this is one playwright and one play it has been been on the stage for four, more than 400 years and it is still alive people can still find new things in his place so that's he is just uh, amazing okay so um but we're going to read it all right read it out loud so that you can get the rhythm you can get get to know what he's talking about way better and then we are also going to try to act a little bit, part of his play. So when you are acting, then the way he's saying things, the feelings, the emotions will, will be better understood. And uh, we are going to ask questions. For example, we are going to ask this question. Why is the balcony scene so influential? So, for example, the balcony scene in Romeo and Juliet. Okay, Juliet is on the balcony talking to Romeo at night. And then why is that so influential? Let me show you examples of how influential it is. The Pope does it. Hitler did it. Mao used to do it many times. Elon Peron did it, Argentinian. And this guy did it, does it too. So what is the fascination with balcony? And then by studying it, we will find out that, that Shakespeare is the first person who did this. And then all these people just copy it, all right? And all of people did it. They all did it. And then, of course, asking such questions, and then we'll write, and we'll write a lot. So we'll find out something new to say about Shakespeare, and, and we also will be able to train to find out something new to say about all literary work, okay? And we will make such investigations and write about our discoveries. And the most important thing is we will further the study of Shakespeare 
by contributing our own cultural angle. Okay, we will look at Shakespeare from our cultural point of view and prove that Shakespeare is more Chinese than being English. All right, so that's what I said when I when I um, went to the went to watch Tempest. So the Tempest, the uh, the scholar there, okay, and he is almost like he immediately reminds me of the Chinese stories of um, of those uh, uh, of those immortals, okay, living in the mountains, who is able to do all kinds of tricks, who is able to do to do uh, uh, interplanetary travels, right? And then I find, wow, there's a lot of similarity between the old, old Chinese thinking. And, um, and I was very surprised to find out that this person, okay, uh, you, can, you can use this link and to find out. And there is a scholar who said, wait a minute, I discover a lot of Taoism in Shakespeare's plays. That's exactly what I would say too. But uh, we will do that. We will share those things in, um, in our classes. So if you ask, what are you going to read? I'm going to choose from one of these titles. We'll probably study only one of them because we don't... Uh, uh, they, they tend to be very difficult to read, uh, very hard to learn. So yeah, um, if, if you guys want to, if you guys want to learn and then you tell us which one is of interest to you. So if there is enough, there are enough people in Rolling Point, then we can start one and discuss Shakespeare and um, make it our make it our discovery journal journey and um, I am more and more interested in this person whom I detested when I was a student which is of course my miss